Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at Adobe InDesign CC. We're going to take a look at some basic text wrap techniques and tips and tricks. Now text wrap of course is not new. It's been in InDesign for years and years and years. However, many of you are new to InDesign and you run into these issues because you write me and say how do I do this or how do I fix this. And unfortunately I don't have time to answer every single email I get or every single posting I get. So when there's enough of it, I usually just put it in a video and then if so, anyone asks, I just point them to the link, here, go watch the video, and i show you how to do it. So this is one of those cases. Um, first off, there are some settings in InDesign that are on by default, which may or may not be a good setting for you, depending on what you're doing. So let's look at three different examples of how to do text wrap, and then I'll show you some pitfalls that you might run into and then ways around them so that you know how to solve those problems. So first and foremost, um, there are typically people that are trying to do text wrap around graphics. Now you can do a text wrap around any object, but let's bring in a graphic. Let's do a file place. And uh, I've got three dolphins here. One's an illustrator file and the other ones are bitmaps. They're on um, PSDs. So I'm gonna bring in the illustrator file first. This could be a vector logo. This could be an EPS, anything that um, is not a flat image or a flat uh, bed of pixels. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and scale this out. And we'll go ahead and put it right there. Now let's say that I want the text to wrap around the dolphin. Uh, pretty basic request. And even right here on your control panel, you've got text wrap options. So people usually are quick to say, okay, I don't know which one's which, let me hover over them so I can see. Well, this one is wrapping around the bounding box. No, I don't want that. This one's wrapping around the object. Yes, that's what I want. And this one is gonna put the text above and below the object. No, I want the one that wraps around the shape of the dolphin. Yes, that's what I want. And then you click it and then this happens. And you're like, huh? Cause that doesn't look like it's around the shape of the dolphin. It looks like it's the same thing as around the bounding box. Well, there's one more step to this and that's why you're not getting right off the bat what you wanna see. Now let's go up to the window menu. Let's come down to text wrap where you have a text wrap panel. We'll keep that panel handy because we're going to use it. And um, you'll see all kinds of controls, including the ability to have it wrap around the shape, but you have wrap options that you need to work with. And so we want to wrap to both sides, left and right. Yep. And we also want it to be the same as if we detect edges. In other words, detect the edges of the object and wrap the text around it. Then that will give you what you want. It's now in the shape of the dolphin, but it can create some weirdness underneath or depending on how your shape is made, you might run into issues where the shape didn't do a good job because just the way the shape is. Now you can do a couple things uh, for that. You can increase the spacing so that it's further away from the dolphin and that will put the text further away all the way around but in this case it's still kind of creating i don't want any text in here because it just looks weird i might also try depending on the layout if i can pick the dolphin up and move it with the move tool to see if that will maybe just moving it a nudging here a, a, a bit here and there may do the trick but nope in this case i'm going to um, bring the spacing back down it's just not doing what I want. You'll notice that if you go to your direct selection tool and click, there is a path that is your actual wrap. That's what this blue line is all the way around. And this is, this is of course, is editable. So if I say, no, 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 don't wrap in this area, I can actually pull this non-printing blue line away from my dolphin so that I don't get any text wrapping in that area. So now if I look at it without anything selected, I don't have the weird thing going inside. It's still got a weird dip there. And again, that might just be a position thing. If I just move it up a little bit, we'll take care of it. And if I don't like the in, in uh, captivity, same thing. Go back to the direct selection tool, uh, click your path, and just continue working to bring that down so that it doesn't wrap in that area. I might want to go ahead and bring this one down too. And bring this one down just so we don't get any more characters when we place this somewhere else trying to get into that spot. Now, uh, once again, depending on how far you go, you may run into a situation where it created a gap 
that you don't want. So be careful how far down you go with that. There we go. So we don't have that extra gap. All right. So that is your first one. Just having it control uh, around an irregular shaped object like a um, uh, vector graphic where you want it to wrap around the shape of the vectors. But what if it's a photograph and you want it to wrap around the shape of the photo? Let's try that. Go up to our file menu, place. Uh, let me deselect, by the way, just make sure I don't have anything selected. Okay, good. File, place, and let's go grab this one. This is a dolphin on a white background. So this is a uh, Photoshop um, pixel-based image. And if I go ahead and scale that out there, we'll have the dolphin um, in, and there, I can make that a little bit bigger. We'll have the dolphin, and the same thing, uh, it's a dolphin on a white background. So I could say, we'll wrap it around the shape of the, of the box, and that's great. Text goes up and, up and down above it and below it, but if I say wrap it around the shape, well, it says I, I can't do that. I don't know what shape you're talking about. And I could say detect edges, but it's really not gonna do it because it's looking at the edges of a box. So let's uh, undo the detect edges and let's go to Photoshop for this one. So let's right click, or actually let's option or alt double click, that'll be the faster way. That'll have it open it in Photoshop where we can get rid of that background. So let's click the little padlock in Photoshop CC to, to turn that into a layer. And now we'll just go ahead and we'll grab our quick select tool and we'll just go ahead and do a quick selection around the dolphin. Yep, we got everything, get that fin, that fin there. And then we'll just go ahead and say select inverse to select everything but the dolphin and backspace or delete, delete on the Mac, backspace on PC. And now we have our dolphin with no background. So, or you, this is also technically called an alpha channel. There is no pixels underneath the dolphin. So we'll save that. We'll close it, head back to InDesign. InDesign will automatically update. And now we can go in and we can say that we want it to wrap around our object shape. And now we can say detect edges. Oops, it would help if I actually select it. There we go. We can say that we want to detect edges. And now it will wrap around the shape of the dolphin itself. The same thing applies. You have that path around it, so you can control kind of, if it's doing some weird spacing, you can control the spacing. You can also move it around uh, so that it's not quite cutting off the top there. And you can play around with this so you don't get this little effect in here, just depending on the um, path that you work around it. But that was taking a photographic image, knocking out the background in Photoshop, bringing it back in, um, just edit, bring, replaces the original. And then we now can say detect edges because there's an alpha channel for it to detect. You could also just simply choose um, alpha channel if you wanted to do that as well. Or if you had a clipping path, you could do a clipping path around it or Photoshop path, I mean. All right, so there we are. One more to go. So let's go ahead and do a place. And this one is just a regular photograph. It's a dolphin in water. There is no... Um, there is no uh, shape that I'm trying to get. I just want it to automatically wrap around the shape of the object. So we do the bounding box. And here's the question I got recently. I did that. I, I have it wrapping around, but now I want to put some text on top of it. You know, maybe the dolphin's name, the nickname that we gave the dolphin. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a text frame. Let's go ahead and uh, drag the text frame out up here and we'll just type the name. Uh, the dolphin's name is Sparky. Why Sparky? Because that's the name I just came up with off the top of my head. All right, so Sparky there is uh, the name of the dolphin. We're going to go ahead and move this now, and here's the problem. We're gonna, we want Sparky's name to be right there. And the minute you let go, it disappears. Why? Because you told that image via the settings to wrap text, to never let text touch that image. So it's trying to wrap the word Sparky around it. The frame isn't big enough, so it just disappears. So how do I get text on top of the image, but still have it wrap the text below the image? And that's, a, that's the hidden setting. That's the one that most people don't know about. So if we bring up our preferences, I'm gonna hit Command K on the Mac, PC Control K to bring up your preferences. There is a composition preference that says, text wrap only affects text 
beneath. In other words, only apply, if I, have, if I have text and image and text, only wrap the text underneath, the text on the bottom. That way it will not affect the text on the top. All right, so now we can put text on top of our images just by changing that preference. Once we change the preference, Sparky comes back. So now I can keep designing, change the colors, change the fonts, do whatever I want. And I now have a document that if I were to print it would look like that with my text nicely wrapped around all the objects. The text is applied, or the text wrap is applied to the objects, move the objects around, put them on different pages, copy paste them, duplicate them, and those text wraps would apply. That preference is set, so now that if I put any text on, any on top of any one of these, uh, the text would show because that's a global preference for the document. If you want that to be your permanent preference from here on out, just simply close your, or save, close your documents, no documents open, go to your preferences, set that preference. Now any new document you create from now on will have that text only, text wrap only affects the text beneath from here on out. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Again, not necessarily new features in InDesign, but certainly some features that people keep asking me about over and over again. So there we are, we took care of it. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.